Hi everyone, today's lesson is um, uh, chapter 13 and it's called Evil in the World. So, ooh, can't wait to jump into this one. You'll notice that um, the background is different because I'm videotaping from home and my dog Lexi might bark because sometimes she's naughty. So if she does, we're just going to ignore it. Um, we're running out of days in October. It's almost Halloween which I think it's kind of fun that we're doing a lesson on evil in the world. Um, but also October is dedicated to the rosary, which is a very powerful Catholic prayer. So we're going to begin by saying the Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, you might want to write these down and then um, maybe pause however you want to do it, the video. Um, but your Catholic faith words are original holiness. That's actually two words. Original holiness, sin, mortal sin, and venial sin. So we're going to talk about a couple of different types of sin. So, why do you think people do evil? Why do people do bad things? We all know we're not supposed to. So why do people do it? And really, what is a sin? What is, what is a sin for someone who's 9, 10, 11 years old? All right, let's see if we can figure this out as we move through the lesson. All right, so we're going to do a little prayer here. Good and gracious God, hear us as we do our best to answer your call to, ju to choose whatever is good over what is evil, what is right over what is wrong. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And that's from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 15. So the Bible is telling us to choose good over evil. The source of sorrow. How did evil enter the world? Some bad things that happen are beyond human control, like sometimes fires or hurricanes. We can't control the weather. We certainly can't control other people. But others are the result. Some evil in this world is the result of bad decisions and actions. God is good and desires only good for people. Yet sin and evil are found in human life. The book of Genesis teaches that Adam and Eve chose to disobey God and ended the original holiness that God created. So there's one of your Catholic faith words. Original holiness is the state of goodness that humanity enjoyed before Adam and Eve messed it all up and ate from the um, tree of good and knowledge. This disobedience of our first parents, Adam and Eve, and its effects on all humans is known as original sin. With original sin, the harmony between humans and God, between humans and nature, and among all people was destroyed. Death entered the world and people became, became subject to the inclination to sin. All humans have been affected by Adam and Eve's decision and all share in the human condition of original sin. As you listen to this scripture passage, recall how much God truly loves and cares for you. Okay, so this scripture passage comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 24 to 28. And it's about the sacrifice of Jesus. For Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice, just as it is appointed that human beings die once after this judgment. So also Christ offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Wow. Wow. So that 
so God did a lot. God is doing a lot to um, keep us safe and away from sin. So now we're going to talk a little bit about turning from God. And we're going to we're going to define for you what's a mortal sin versus a venial sin. The presence of evil and of innocent suffering in the world are two of the hardest things for humans to face. Why evil exists is the hardest question to answer. Only faith can provide an adequate explanation. As Catholics, we know that no evil and no suffering is more powerful than God. So God will triumph in the end. The Father so wanted us to know this that he sent his Son to the world. Jesus' suffering on the cross and his resurrection are sure signs that God is more powerful than evil. So never give up. Even though things may be bad, and there is a lot of evil in this world, God will prevail. Jesus conquered sin by offering us a way back to God. He conquered everlasting death by giving us eternal life. Sin is a deliberate thought, word, deed, or omission that is contrary to the law of God. Sins of omission occur when we do not do what we should, even when we know it's right. Sins of, of, of commission occur when we do something we should not have done, even though we know it's wrong. Now we're going to talk about mortal sin. Mortal sin is the most serious form of personal sin. Someone who commits mortal sin breaks her, his or her relationship with God. Mortal sin involves complete selfishness. For a sin to be mortal, it must be a serious matter done with a person's full knowledge and complete consent. Examples of such serious matters are murder, extreme forms of injury, and wishing grave harm to others. Even in these, in these situations... The other two conditions of full knowledge and consent must be met before it's a mortal sin. A person who has tried to live in friendship with God does not easily choose sin so seriously. So by praying and being a good person, it will keep you away from mortal sin. So to restore friendship with God after committing a mortal sin, the sinner must repent. That means turn away from sin and seek forgiveness through the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. In other words, you need to go to confession. God's grace helps the sinner to do this. Now we're going to talk about a venial sin. Venial sins weaken a person's relationship with God. A venial sin um, involves disobeying God's law in a less serious manner than a mortal sin. For example, someone who makes fun of another person because of gender physical or mental abilities or appearances causes harm to that person's dignity and worth. This lack of respect can be a venial sin. Venial sin may sometimes lead to a mortal sin, so you got to be careful. A person who lies about or steals small things may be establishing a pattern of behavior that can lead to more serious sins. Small acts of discrimination can lead to to extreme forms that could be more mortally sinful if of choosing persons to show hate rather than love. Mortal sin occurs when selfishness wins out completely. So sin is a deliberate thought, word, deed, or omission that is opposite of the law of God. Sin hurts our relationship with God and other people. A mortal sin is the most serious form of sin, and that totally breaks his relationship with God. A venial sin is a sin that weakens our relationship with God, but doesn't completely destroy it. Now here's some good news, because that's kind of some heavy-duty stuff. Even in the most serious cases of sin, God always forgives sinners when they are truly sorry and wish to turn their hearts to him again. And you can do this through the sacrament of confession or penance. So it's very important to remember that we've got that sacrament to help save our souls. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, our Catholic life. 
So from the Bible, you learn that in the face of tragedy, God's people bring their feelings of sorrow and anger to God. Such prayers of sorrow and anger are called lamentations. They express the need for God's presence in times of difficulty. Psalm 55 is, a, is an example of a prayer of lamentation. So to understand it, you can pray it this way. So you can express your feelings honestly. Tell God you're really mad. You're really mad about something. You're really upset. Name the painful situation clearly. And then express your hope and trust that God will make it better. And then you'll feel better. And God will help you to get rid of, of that feel, those, those negative feelings. So um, that is it. We're going to end with the prayer of the act of contrition. I know it's been a long time since most of you have said this, but I want you to listen carefully to the words because this is the prayer that you would pray after you've gone to confession. My God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and in failing to do good, I have sinned against you whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend with your help to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Our Savior Jesus Christ suffered and died for us. In his name, my God, have mercy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Go out there and make it a great week. I will see you at the next lesson. God bless everyone.